Shio Nagada, Chao de He, Dog with Don't Un, the Gwena Shan, Wayo He, Ogei, Ani Gudu Ogei. Hello, everybody. My name is Jarrett Wildcat. Uh, I'm an enrolled member of the Eastern Band of Cherokee, and I'm from the Wolftown community. And I actually work for the museum as a lead cultural specialist. And today, we're going to be going over foraging for Sochan and how it's very important to our society, um, our everyday foods, and other things like that. Uh, Sochan, oftentimes known as the cutleaf coneflower, is actually part of the sunflower family. And it's been said that Sochan actually reaches all the way up through the Appalachian region, all the way up into Maine. Uh, some say it's even made, made its way to the upper Midwest. So typically, Sochan, you're gonna find it mostly, some say by the riverbanks. Uh, personally, I found it up in the higher mountain region as well. Um, but mostly it's gonna be by the rivers. That's probably your best bet. So with Sochan, uh, it's believed that Sochan actually has a lot of health benefits. Uh, much like your leafy greens, it's gonna help out a lot with iron, it's gonna help out with calcium, uh, all kinds of different uh, ex health benefits coming from Sochan. Uh, it's also believed that the root itself is really good for helping with uh, indigestion issues. When it comes to picking Sochan, you don't want to pick the first plant, and nor do you want to pick the last one. I've always been told that when you're picking Sochan, you don't want to pick one giant cluster. You want to actually kind of pick here, a little bit there, so that way you're helping make sure that those plants, the Sochan, will actually grow back in a good way the next season. Um, some say growing, or not growing, uh, picking Sochan, it's actually best to pick it in early spring and I've even heard of some people picking Sochan in early summer. So it's up to the individual. Um, I've always heard that it's best to do it early spring when it's little, because that's when the best taste is. And uh, when the summertime comes along, it's gonna be a little bit tougher, a little bit harder, and the stem's gonna be a lot longer too as well. One of my fondest memories uh, growing up was uh, me, my mom, my grandma, my brother, we would travel to like Murphy or like Robbinsville or somewhere just to kind of get away for the day. Uh, we would pack um, like bologna sandwiches and chips and things like that. And we would actually get together in the car, head down the road, and we would go out and just pick Sochan. And, and, and the important thing was, was like I said, you know, you didn't want to pick the first one nor do you want to pick the last one. I've always been told that that first one you leave, that's for the future, that's for our future generation, our kids, so that way they'll have that. And so, but growing up, I remember doing that and I definitely look forward to doing it again. And so Chan, I feel like it's just, it goes good with a lot of things. Uh, my grandma oftentimes would either A, make some trout and like bread it up cook it that way, or she would do uh, fried chicken with potatoes and green beans. And oftentimes when preparing it, she would boil it down after she cleaned it for about two or three times. Uh, she would set it in a bowl and, of water and just kind of clean it and get all the, you know, whatever's unclean off of it. And so whenever she would do that, that's when she would boil it. Now I've heard of some people, they would actually fry it. And it's good that way as well. Some people do it to where it's like crunchy. I didn't prefer it that way, but you know, to each their own. We're coming across our uh, second one I found. And this one, a good way to tell is a lot of them will have like a purple, like a purple uh, kind of a color near the bottom. And uh, as you can see, it's a little bit tall, but it's still good. You can still pick it and uh, you always want to make sure it's, like I said, you don't want to pick the first one you find. Um, so this is actually the second one I found. And so I believe it's time. So usually what we've done is some people will actually go not all the way to the bottom, but they'll kind of just go a little bit above the top, a little bit above the base. They'll pick it up 
And a good way to look at it is it's going to have like jagged edges, pointy like. And so some people, they sniff it and it's got a good smell to it. And like, you know, I talked about how we prepare them, how we can eat them. And um, this is a good one right here. But yeah, always look for the jagged edge, kind of like pointy looking. And you gotta be careful of everything else around it. Some of it's gonna look kind of close to it. Um, but for me, the dead giveaways are the, the pointy part. It's kind of jagged on the way up, the leaves are. And uh, looking for that purple part. It's almost like a, like a celery stalk, almost. But that's usually what I look for. And that's usually what my grandma told me. With Sochan, in a language we always, I always knew it as so chana, so chana, and but then I've also heard from uh, uh, tribes out west, um, Cherokee Nation. I've heard them pronounce it as kochan or uh, kochu. So, but I always acknowledge the way they said it, and so you know it's cool though to think that you know to realize that the plants. They kind of traveled, they made their way out there. So not only do we get this delicacy of a green leafy plant, they get it also. And so with that, I'm just thankful we have it. And also to educate those on how you're supposed to pick it, but also just making sure there's always enough for someone else. Because we are not, we do not own the land. We are only guests here. So we got to take care of the earth.